All right, Mr. Hill, in New Hampshire, could you give us the story of that sighting? Well, this happened in 1961, Tuesday the 19th of uh, September. And my wife and I were returning from New Hampshire, from a correction, from Canada to New Hampshire. We were driving along Route 3, and it was approximately 11 o'clock at night in the evening when we saw what looked like a bright star in the heavens. It was the brightest star up there, and it was very clear night. So my wife remarked, uh, I was driving the car, and she remarked that the star had begun to move. So uh, this caused me to look through the windshield up toward the sky, and I told her that it was probably a satellite. Nothing to get alarmed about. We did have a, a pair of 7x50 crescent binoculars with us. So I stopped the car. And we got out, and she took the binoculars and was looking at the object, and I reached under the seat to get our little doggy, a little dachshund, and put the chain on her to walk her about while my wife was looking at the object. And she then passed the binoculars to me and said, well, you must really look at this satellite because it's not uh, behaving as we would expect a satellite to behave like. Well, I took the binoculars from her, and I too began looking, and surprisingly, this what I thought was a star and a satellite began coming in my direction at a very rapid uh, rate of speed. Uh, I was standing, to give a picture, I was standing facing the west, which would have been toward Vermont, and the object was coming from my left, which, which would have been to the south of me, and as it passed my right shoulder, it was quite a distance out, it made a left turn, completing the turn, and coming in toward me. Well, this caused me to become quite alarmed, and uh, I, re I told my wife, well, apparently it is not a satellite, it must be a passenger plane, and, a, and they obviously uh, are looking at us, and I thought that the pilot was uh, having uh, fun, uh, that he could easily see our car with the dome light on. Uh, we had not passed any traffic uh, that evening, uh, going or coming in either direction. So I felt a bit uh, uncomfortable to see this what I thought was a plane uh, come in our direction, so I returned to the car, and so did she, and we drove down the highway. We continued driving south, and my wife would occasionally remark that this object was still following us. It was flying in a very erratic pattern, and she wanted me to stop, and I would occasionally and look over in toward her side, and I could see that this uh, light was still out there moving about, it would go up and then it would come down at very rapid and odd patterns of flight. Well, then I thought it was probably uh, a military craft and uh, uh, I was thinking of the hot rod type flyer uh, and apparently they were having fun with us. These are the thoughts that were going on in my mind because uh, I had not at any time ever given any thought to uh, UFOs. You might say that I was a bit cynical about the entire uh, idea uh, concerning you unidentified flying objects. Well, this continued on for several miles as we would travel and stop and look and then continue to travel again. And finally, my wife became very uh, uh, upset. She said, I, I must stop the car again. Look, right overhead. And I looked through the windshield off to the right on her, the passenger side of the car, and this object now was very extremely close, and it was moving backwards. And what I failed to mention is when we saw the object off in a great distance, it appeared to be winking, but now that it was close, it looked as if there was just one solid band of light, and this was moving backwards. And I had slowed the car down to approximately five miles an hour. Well, this was very upsetting, so I came to a complete stop in the center of the highway. I got out of the car, and I took the binoculars. I rest my left arm on the door that was open at the car door, and my right uh, elbow on the roof of the car. And I tried to look, but the car was motor was running, so I had to step away. Uh, as I stepped away from the car, the object swung from the passenger side over to the left, which would have been the side that I was driving, uh, and making a large arc-like turn, uh, placing it over a field. Well, this was very alarming to me, and I began uh, walking across the highway, looking up at the object with the binoculars, putting them down, shaking my head, saying, well, this just can't be true. I don't believe it. Uh, and I continued to walk until I was about, uh, oh, I would say approximately uh, 100 feet in this field, across this field, and the object was just above me. And this is when, when, 
while looking with the binoculars, I could see what I thought was approximately 9 to 11 uh, men. I would describe them. I would say that they were men. Uh, there was nothing uh, grotesque about them. Looking back at me, looking down uh, through this plate of glass, the series row, a series of windows toward me. So I then uh, was quite alarmed. But they, uh, of the group that was looking, they all turned to the back of so that was facing the uh, back of them. There was a panel. It looked as if it was a panel. And they began pulling levers. Only one object continued to stare from the window down toward me. And I then saw two red lights on the side of the craft, which seemed to be the extension of a wing, a fan-type wing, I would describe it, not a conventional wing that we associate with uh, airplanes, but more of a fan-type thing, moving away from the side of this object, which had the shape of the so-called flying saucer. Well, this was too much for me, and I made a hasty retreat to the car, screaming to the wife that they were they had seen me, they had seen us, and we had to get away. And this was the extent of the sighting, which I found very distressing and very difficult to believe. Uh, Mr. Hill, did you report this to anyone? Yes, we did. After we arrived home in Portsmouth, well, we decided we wouldn't uh, mention this to anyone, that it was too ridiculous, too absurd <laughs> for us to believe. Uh, yet we knew we had seen something, uh, something uh, that uh, we that was strange to us. Uh, we, I suppose, we can both tell what a uh, plane looked like. And I failed to mention that there was the absence of any sound. There was absolutely no sound associated with this object. It must have, at the time, been approximately a hundred uh, feet up or above my head. This would be about ten stories up. Uh, the size of it was about oh, approximately. Uh, uh, if you were looking at a large uh, military plane or at any commercial airliner from tail to head, uh, this is the size of it as the series of windows were around it. This is how huge it was. When we arrived in Portsmouth, we decided not to tell anyone, but uh, my wife decided she would tell her sister. Well, she called her sister and she said, well, hang up. She was going to call a friend of hers that is a physicist and uh, asked what he knows about these things. So she called us, and her sister called us back to tell us that the physicist had suggested that we go out and see if there was any radioactivity around, ready, anything uh, unusual about the car, if we had a compass to take it with us. Well, I, this was too much for me. I told my wife that, as far as I was concerned, uh, I wanted to forget the whole thing. And so she said, well, where's the compass? And I told her, well, I don't know. I put it somewhere, and she said, well, where's the compass? I said, oh, geez, if you're going to keep this up, I'll smash the compass. And she said, well, if you do, I'll go out and buy another one. And so she found the compass. She went out, and she came back in uh, to the house very excited and insisted on me going out and looking at her car. We were using her car at the time. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, on the trunk of her car, there were these large, shiny spots about the size of uh, a silver dollar. There must have been approximately 20 of these spots, not in any particular pattern, but just these spots on the trunk. Uh, after having traveled the distance we had, the car was quite dusty, but these spots were very, very highly shiny. And wherever she would put the compass near the, the, these spots, uh, the compass would spin. But if she placed the compass close to uh, any of the areas where the spots weren't located, surprisingly, the compass then would tilt downward toward the middle of the, of the car. Well, I thought this was a bit unusual because I did try to say, well, at any time you take a compass and place it around any metal, uh, particularly like a car with a battery, it will attract a magnet to it. But the fact that the compass would spin only in the area where the spot was located, I thought was a bit unusual. And then this is when my wife decided, well, we should notify someone, and we thought of notifying of the military uh, base located in this area. And uh, briefly, what was their reaction to this? Uh, it was curious and interesting. Uh, they, uh, I didn't want any parts of it. I told my wife that she could go ahead and contact them and leave me out of it. Uh, but while talking to her, then they asked for me to uh, give my account of it. And this uh, drew me into the conversation. So I uh, also talked to a major and uh, he then explained to me that the conversation was going to be monitored 
and that uh, I was to uh, hold on and uh, the conversation was not going to take place at this particular military establishment, but elsewhere, but he did not designate where. So I held on for a few minutes, brief minutes, and then another voice came on telling me to tell all that I had seen and to give an account, a full account and description of this uh, thing that I had seen. And you, have you heard from them since that time? Uh, this was on, uh, uh, well, they called back the following morning about uh, 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the, uh, I thought what this officer had to say was very interesting. He did not elaborate on why he said this, but he said he had been up all night uh, working on the uh, description of the wings of this and the two red lights. And uh, that, uh, could I give any more information? Well, I had given him all the information I could at the time about it. And that was the extent of, uh, of the, the contact we had with the uh, military, with the Air Force. Can you describe these people or things you saw at the window? Uh, to give a description of them? Yes. Yes, well, there was nothing unusual about them. They did have on what I thought uh, was a black-type shiny uniform, similar to the, to the kind uh, you find uh, motorcyclists wearing, the black leather-type jackets and whatnot. And uh, the uh, one that I will now, just for, identif uh, for identifying purposes, call a leader, uh, well, he had on a military-type cap, with the visor, while the others did not, uh, and they moved back to the wind, away from the window, while this one with the black leather type uh, uniform, I will say uniform, continued to look down at me. Well, I think you indicated earlier that they were pretty human looking. Yes, they? and uh, you have to consider that looking uh, at anyone in a window uh, ten stories up with a binocular, uh, the only thing you can discern is that they look human and nothing grotesque about them. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hill, this is Wes Fitch. Uh, did you feel there was anything sinister about these people? Did you get that impression? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, only that uh, it was a strange situation, and therefore uh, I have thought of this many times, that is to say, was there anything sinister about them, or was it because of the unusual situation that I was in, uh, magnifying uh, my uh, feelings? Uh, I did feel that there was something sinister, strange, unusual about the whole thing. Do you feel that those thoughts had anything to do with that beeping sound that followed uh, your car? I failed to mention that, didn't I? When I returned to the car when we were up in the mountains, when I mentioned to my wife uh, that, uh, oh my God, I said, they uh, are, are looking at us and they have, they, have, they have seen us and they're coming after us. Uh, when I returned to the car, there was a series of beeps uh, these beeps were very peculiar because uh, it was much like a tuning fork being struck and placed against you, a very subtle type vibration. And that's the way the car vibrated. And it was beep, 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 beep. And I, I said to my wife, my God, what is that? I said, look out the window, they're right overhead. And she looked out of the window, but she couldn't see anything. And, and later we find out that you couldn't see the sky as well. So apparently the craft had moved overhead over us. Hmm. Do you think that the metal discs then did have anything to do with that beeping sound? I do, yes. Hmm. The thing that has continued to be an enigma, a puzzle to me, is that I said, my God, they're going to capture us. And uh, I have never understood why. I cannot understand why I made that remark. Only to have the beeping sound and then uh, 35 miles further south, we were beeped again, and this is the only time my wife and I then began to communicate with one another by saying, well, what was it we saw? Uh, this is surprising because that 35 mi mile period, we did not discuss anything. Uh, this is Earl F. speaking. You didn't have a relaxed feeling at any time, did you? Uh, yes. You did? Uh, after I, rushed, I returned to the car and I told my wife they were going to capture us, and she looked out of the window and she said she could not see them or it or the object and then we had the series of beeps uh there is just a void you might say because we did not again mention anything about uh having seen anything and so we were now uh 35 miles further south and uh, we saw what we thought was a bright moon and i said oh my god not again and then we were beeped again and then we can, from that point, we started talking with one another about, well, what do you think of that? And my wife asked me, well, do you believe in flying saucers now? And I said, oh, don't be silly, of course not. 